Alex Barron with Digital Research Corporation, and I'm sitting alongside Thompson Nguyen, the CEO and co-founder of Frame Data. Welcome, Thompson. Thanks for having me. So could you tell us a little bit about what Frame Data does? Yeah, Frame Data is a predictive analytics company that takes in user data and predicts forward user behavior. And so, for example, we predict forward when users are about to churn from your application, and we also predict when users are about to upsell or purchase a product. Okay, excellent. Now, you know, churning and upsell tends to be, you know, it's a very important business uh, issue, of course, but people tend to prefer to talk about, you know, new acquisition and all that. So how do you approach a conversation to a potential customer to say, like, hey, churn and upsells are actually a more important, and more valuable uh, metric? Yeah, of course. In, in Silicon Valley right now, uh, there is a huge concern about uh, user retention and user upsell. And the reason why is because, uh, say, three years ago, user acquisition used to be the most important problem, but with the advent of uh, many ad tech companies and just uh, because it's now a lot easier to create an application either online or on a mobile app, um, user retention is now paramount simply because it's easy to get a person to sign up for your app and download it. It's now another thing to get them to retain. Sure, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now I think one of the positions that you take is the frame data is essentially data science as a service. So yes. would you say your, your core customers are, are these app developers or gaming companies that are pretty small, they don't have a data science team or don't have the budget to you know, build one out. Would you say that's like your core users? We, we started out with that assumption that uh, small medium businesses, particularly in SaaS and uh, mobile gaming, would be our core users. And what we're finding is that uh, larger enterprises are also interested in using Framed. And these are companies with uh, pre-existing data science teams. And they use Framed's uh, platform to augment their own services. Uh, what we've built in the back end is a predictive analytics platform that has a variety and ensemble of machine learning models. And so data scientists who are familiar with machine learning can use us to facilitate and quickly accelerate their, their insights. And companies without data science teams can, can use us in the traditional manner. Okay, excellent. Now, I understand the focus is more on the you know, user retention and all that, but are there any applications for new user acquisition using predictive analytics? Yeah, of course. Um, I think a lot, of, uh, uh, a growing number of our customers are using frame data to determine which marketing channel is the most effective. And so, for a marketing growth manager uh, or growth hacker, as they call it in Silicon Valley, um, this person can log into frame data and determine which marketing channel is responsible for the most valuable users uh, acquired and also the most users acquired and that person can then double down or adjust uh, his or her marketing spend as necessary. And so we are going slowly into user acquisition, but more of a predictive, which channel is going to be the most efficient for you. Okay, interesting. So I imagine there are you know, plenty of competitors on the market. How do you differentiate yourself with the whole of the competitors? Yeah, I think you know there are two parts. Uh, one is our core DNA of machine learning and uh, data science. Uh, my co-parent and I have worked in data science and uh, big data for seven years now. And a lot of the machine learning itself uh, is an ensemble of 50 plus models that we've developed over the eight years we've worked together. Um, and so the DNA of our company has always been in machine learning and predictive analytics. The second part is that the models uh, get better over time. As we predict users to churn or upsell, the models will actually receive that feedback and get better each, uh, right now, it used to be each day, now it's every eight hours. And we call this genetic ad adaptation. And so the machine learning will automatically adjust itself to improve over time so that as a company uses frames, they'll see a much higher accuracy and a much higher return. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I understand you have a pretty strong background in data science. Do you think you're a visiting scholar at NYU, is that right? I, I am, yeah. Okay. I, uh, I studied mathematics at Berkeley, and then I went on to the University of Cambridge to study computational biology. Uh, my co-founder studied computer science at UC Berkeley and uh, worked at Microsoft uh, on web office. And so uh, a lot of our background consists of machine learning and, and big data app development. Um, at NYU, I studied further uh, predicting forward when patients were going to uh, attend hospital for some reason, um, and that's based off of pre-patient or uh, pre-history outpatient data. And so a lot of the, uh, the common machine learning models that we use in Framed uh, were initially developed at NYU, and that's also why NYU is one of our investors. Okay, excellent. So, you know, there's a ton of knowledge that you have in both your, your, your knowledge and your co-founder's knowledge. Um, a lot of technical uh, expertise. So when you come into a new company and like they're on board, user retention, predictive analytics, 
What is like the ramp up to implement Framed and get them going on the platform? Fortunately, we tried to create Framed to be as simple as possible. Um, right now we're built on 20 different data analytics services, so the onboarding is rather simple. If you use, say, uh, Flurry or Amplitude, or you store your data in Redshift uh, or uh, let's just say Postgres, we, uh, you automatically type in, you type in where, where your data is stored and Frame will automatically uh, pull it in and do some light uh, extract transfer, transform and load. And the onboarding after that is rather simple. You define which events are your churn events and which events are your upsell purchasing events and then Frame takes care of it from there. And so we want the onboarding process to be as simple as possible to uh, one, open up the product to not just data scientists and engineers, but product managers and marketers. People who uh, are less technical, but require the technical resources that they desperately need. Sure, sure. Now, can you talk about some of your success stories? Like, is there one that really jumps out? It doesn't have to be a name. It could even just be, you know, a huge impact at a smaller company or less famous company. Yeah, you know, with uh, one of our larger clients, this is a large media company, uh, probably a top 20 media company on the internet, we've been able to define uh, what exactly makes a viral article, and we've been able to define what makes a repeat user. And for those two reports alone, we've been able to increase user retention, and this is repeat viewership by about 15%, and this is on the order of several million uh, readers. Um, and so this, you know, this this automatically has some clear ROI from their from their ad uh, business perspective, and uh, it's a great win for both of us. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, you know, you were a bit, very busy guy before starting Framed. You know, what um, finally led you to create Framed, and you know, what came up with the, what were the, what was the inspiration behind the idea? Yeah, um, at my last startup uh, uh, causes, I was the head data scientist, and my co-founder Elliot Block was the uh, principal data engineer. And the two of us worked on data problems at Causes, uh, similar to what we're working on at Framed. Causes was a social network for good, started by Joe Green and Sean Parker. And it was a website where you could create a petition or a donation to a nonprofit campaign. And we were tasked with creating the big data machine learning models to predict forward uh, when someone's going to take an action or when someone's going to donate to a nonprofit. And the hardest part about building that big data infrastructure was actually getting people to agree to build internal tooling. And so we found an opportunity in the market where, hey, you know, there's a lot of, this friction probably exists everywhere else. Let's just build this and then sell it as a service. Okay, excellent. So any startup is challenging. What were the, you know, especially challenging aspects of starting Framed? Well, I think, you know, uh, Peter Thiel writes about this zero to one, where um, it's it's easy it's easier to come up with an idea and even to come up with a, a minimum viable product. It's another uh, work entirely to find someone to use it and then pay for it and then actually find utility from it. And so getting that first company to use us, to trust us with sending us data, uh, to pay for us, and then actually find utility was probably the hardest part, simply because it required, uh, it, it's no longer a process of machine learning and computer engineering, but a process of sales and marketing and, and, and talking to users. And I think that was one of the core tenets of Y Combinator. We were a part of the winter 2014 class, and the only things they cared about were uh, writing code and talking to users. Okay. Now, going through Y Combinator, could you talk about that experience? I mean, it must have opened up a lot of doors in terms of both investors, but also uh, potential customers, because you have all these great companies that are alumni in your class, and could you talk about that a bit? Yeah, Y Combinator really was a, a wonderful experience. We were in the winter 2014 batch, uh, along with 67 other companies. And uh, immediately, uh, what we felt was the time urgency of making sure we grew fast enough. Sure, um, the holidays coming. That's right. So it's three months, and and the the main thing is to grow ten percent week over week in, in some metric. And so we chose uh, user acquisition. And so for Y Combinator, the value really was in the uh, the partnership. The partners knew quite a bit about enterprise sales, about product development, and about user experience. Um, and, and of course, as you say, um, there's a lot of uh, companies in the network that are more than happy to try your product out. And so they were some of our first customers, um, you know, first 10 customers, I'd say. Uh, and then the, the, the brand helps with respect to customer development and for PR. Okay, great. So obviously, getting into Y Combinator is a huge win or a huge accomplishment. 
What were some of the other big wins along the way that gave you confidence to keep pushing with this idea? Yeah, of course. I, I think, you know, it, while it's great to uh, say that we've been through Y Combinator, uh, the goal is obviously to, to build a business and to build a, a, a product that works. And I think post Y Combinator, we were uh, really proud to announce our uh, seed round. Our two million dollar seed round with Google Ventures, uh, NYU, and Innovation Works, a venture fund in China, uh, and uh, you know some really strong names, and it was a really good uh, point of validation that there was a big opportunity in the market to go into large enterprises and to sell our product um, to every company that requires predictive analytics. Okay, good stuff. Now, what's the the future for Frame Data? What's you know next on the horizon for you guys? I think, you know, for Framed, we, we truly want to be the predictive analytics solution in every business. I think right now, uh, businesses are striving to describe their company's past, and uh, that's becoming more and more concrete in the past 10 years. Uh, we used to call this business intelligence. Um, right now, we're seeing this uh, resurgence or insurgence of predictive analytics applications, uh, companies that are able to predict forward user behavior. But I think the future after that is this field of prescriptive analytics. If we know what's going to happen to a user in the future, we can automatically subscribe uh, them to a newsletter or we can prescribe some sort of marketing intervention to save them. And so, for example, if we predict 1,000 users are going to leave your application and we also know that this email tends to work well with half of that population, then we'll just automatically send the email. And so, in sorts, we want to truly become the, the easy button for churn reduction uh, and become the, the true prescriptive analytics application. Okay, excellent. So is there a schedule for when you want to move into more prescriptive analytics? Or? I think right now uh, we want to make sure we can sell the predictive analytics solution and, and get it right, not just for small and medium businesses, but for large enterprises. Uh, and that includes uh, expanding into different geographies, uh, Southeast Asia and Japan in particular. And so once we uh, are able to confidently say that pres uh, predictive analytics is a part of every business's toolkit, then the prescriptive analytics part uh, comes into play. Okay. Now, before we wrap up, you know, one of the things that Japanese people are especially interested in, you know, people uh, in the Japanese tech industry, is they look at Silicon Valley and San Francisco and they're always so impressed by, you know, how many of these amazing companies like Framed and, you know, all the other Y Combinator companies and tech stars and you name it. There's so many of these great companies and they build these huge businesses that you know, go around the world. Do you have any advice for startup founders in, uh, in Japan or really anywhere in the world? Yeah, I think um, building a company is hard work and there's always going to be a lot of detractors and people who uh, wish you well but have no idea what you're doing. Sure, sure. And I think um, it takes a lot of conviction and a lot of hard work to, to move a company forward. And uh, I mentioned Peter Thiel's Zero to One book. Uh, basically, you know, entrepreneurs are people who will a product and an idea into existence. And that's a very non-trivial task. And so uh, figuring out where the gap in the market is, figuring out what a product looks like, and then figuring out how to find your first 10, 100 customers uh, will require immense, not just immense amounts of time, but dedication, effort, uh, and tolerance simply because you will be rejected over and over and over again. And so I think what I've, I've certainly found useful as a trait uh, and what I've found amongst more successful entrepreneurs in the space is this determination and will to succeed. Okay, so resilience, durability. That's right. I, I think, yeah, resilience, durability, and, and a hard work ethic. I think it certainly is a long journey ahead okay. uh, for us. But sure. a, a, a prosperous one and we're, we couldn't be more excited. Excellent, that's great. Well, you know, I think we better wrap at this point, but thank you so much for your time, and uh, people can find more about you at frame.io. Frame.io, right? that's correct. All right. Thanks so much, Thompson. Well, thank you.